I don't know what happened, y'all, but evidently Chrome updated itself or something and changed my settings on my camera. And I always have to figure out where it's coming from and get it going. So sorry for the delay. I apologize, but nothing I can do. Nothing I can do. So get on in here, folks. Get on in here. Let me see what I'm... We got some great deals going on. Half price. Control journal and chaos to clean book. So get on in here. Twilight zone. Do do do. Yep. It feels like the twilight zone. I'm telling you. It's been one of those mornings. You just got to hold on, y'all. Hold on. I'm looking for something. There. I found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. So I'm going to put that back there and stick my feather duster back where it goes. <clears throat> so come on in. Come on in. It's been a, it's been, um, a nonstop morning, I'm telling you. Just nonstop. First thing I see this morning is that there's been a bridge collapse in Baltimore. Now, as y'all know, Baltimore is near and dear to the hearts of, of Jack and Kathy. They have family there. They it's it's just, you know, it's we've had weddings there. I've gone to two weddings there. <clears throat> And I, when I saw that the bridge had collapsed in Baltimore, I immediately contacted Kathy and I said, what do you know? And she said, all friends and family are accounted for. So all of Jack and Kathy's family is accounted for. Uh, and... I turned on the news and a cargo ship. Now, y'all know we get stuff on cargo ships, but it never comes in and out of the Baltimore Harbor. Um, but we understand a lot of the stuff that y'all order from us comes in on cargo ships. And it takes three months to get things most of the time, especially now since the lockdowns. And... I asked Kathy about the bridge and she said, that's the bridge where Jack and I grew up. That was where uh, it was in Dundalk. That was, I got a funny story about Dundalk and my assistant Michelle was from that area. I've been through that area and this cargo ship hit the bridge and it dropped like a rock you know that's how gravity works hit the bridge and it just went down sarah's saying she's crossed that bridge i mean i think i've crossed that bridge to get to the other side for a wedding but i, I you know i'm just going by gps i don't really know don't know my way around baltimore i tried to take a shortcut one time and went straight through the, uh, not the good part of town. There's gangs and stuff on the street. And Robert said, don't stop. Don't stop. So we didn't. We didn't. We had a big event in Baltimore one time. We introduced Body Clutter, our book. Anyway, Kathy was in charge of the event. So it was just a, a beautiful time. We were at the Inner Harbor. Anyway, uh, so let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please be with all the people in Baltimore that are impacted by the by this bridge going down. Please be with that one lady that I saw on, on X who said, My job's just right over there. I don't guess I'll have a job anymore. So, Lord, please be with all the people who are suffering because of the loss of this bridge. Bridges are important things. 
Thank you for your prophets who've been telling us for months to watch the water. Watch the water. So thank you for Dutch Sheets and Tim Sheets and all the people that have prayed over the water from tributaries to, to the Mississippi River, major waterways. Keep those prayers going and Lord, protect us from the evil. Protect us from the evil. Be with the people that are missing. Be with the divers that are looking for them. Be with the people on the ship. Lord, keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Whew. God gets all the glory, even though you don't know how, but he will. My cousin crosses that bridge every day. He made it before the collapse. Prayers for all the folks. Mm, mm, mm. You know, my daddy, my Patty, Leanne, Dina, Susan, Clifton, And me, our daddy, built bridges. He ran the cranes that that built the bridges, especially the one over the Mississippi River in Dyersburg, Tennessee, going to Carruthersville, Missouri. He built that bridge when we were in high school. If y'all remember Liz, her husband... Worked on cranes to help build bridges and skyscrapers. So, y'all, just keep everybody in Baltimore in your prayers. Keep them safe. Yeah, it's time for us to get our houses in order. We got to get ready. So, today I want to talk about um, menu planning. And I know that you don't want to talk about that because you just, I'm not, I don't like to eat the stuff that I have written down and fix it where you can mix and match. As long as you got the food in the house, you can cook it. Last night I made an amazing dinner. And even Robert said, this has flavor notes that I've not tasted before. <laughs> He's got a palate on him, I'm telling you. And I was able to take a simple recipe for baked ziti and turn it into something special. And it, it had mozzarella cheese in it. It had Parmesan cheese in it. It had cream cheese in it. And some pasta sauce and some tomatoes, crushed tomatoes. And you know, I got enough to put it in some containers and put it in the freezer so that we could have some more meals out of it. Yeah, it was all I'd have to do is put some more cheese on top and bake it again. So, folks, ha having the food in your house and a perpetual pantry, the one that you keep filling up, like Robert's gone to the grocery store today. I use cream cheese. I, knock, knock. I use cream cheese, a can of um, that was needed to be used, a, a pasta sauce. It was a three cheese pasta sauce that was in a can. I had um, a can of crushed tomatoes, some ziti. It wasn't ziti, it was penne pasta, but it was just a miniature version of the, the bigger ziti. And I used a package, instead of hamburger meat, I used sausage. I had some ground pork sausage in my freezer, and that's what I used. So 
Somebody's spamming us. They ain't having it. And then I had Texas toast. And if you've got a bread machine and you're not making bread to slice up into Texas toast, I don't know what you're doing. Because that, that bread machine will make your Texas toast for you. She clocked, Sage clocked out at 11.11. I love that number. I love my birthday, 111. Anyway, let's give some tips. My eyes itching. Robert's gone to the grocery store to replenish the things we used in the last few meals we've cooked. And to get us some eggs, because we're getting low on eggs. We like eggs. Anyway, folks, it's time for us to buckle down. What if you went to the grocery store on the other side of the bridge? What are you going to do in Baltimore? I am thankful that I don't live in a, in a big city. I, I've never lived in a city except for the three months that I took care of Ben. I didn't really take care of him. I was there to help him get settled in after being in prison. And we had to get him a driver's license. He had to have a car. Just lots of things. And and I helped. I helped a little. God helped a lot. I don't know who I've blocked. I've tried again. Okay. So God gets all the glory, y'all. He gets all the glory. So let's think about menu planning. And Patera, if you haven't ever watched Appalachian's Homestead with Patera, she talked about this yesterday when I, I'd already gotten the essay ready to go out. So she wasn't copying me. It's just universal right now. Come up with, with 12 meals that you can rotate. In our control journal, which is half price right now, we've got five weeks of menu planning. Now, we don't tell you what to cook, but we tell you where to put it down so that you've got it in case your digital devices don't work. If you don't have a calendar in which to write down your menu plans, they're half price right now. Get a little one, get a big one. It doesn't matter. Get a calendar that you can use. And one of the greatest tips for menu planning It's post-it note tape or post-it notes. I don't have any post-it notes up here. I've used them all. But the little little pads of post-it notes fit right fit right here. Look at that. And one of the great tips we got was just to cut off the sticky part and use the sticky part right down here at the bottom. And then as you cook the food, move it on down and you can move them around. I like having a basic weekly plan to your menus. Like Monday is Mexican. Monday, think about the alliteration. Monday is Mexican. Tuesday, taco. Somebody says taco. People say taco Tuesday all over the world. Taco Tuesday. But you could have meatless Monday, just a pot of beans. And Patera talked about what we've been talking about for 20 something years. She said, write down the main item for your menu. So she's talking about making a pot of pinto beans in a crock pot. And write down how many things you can do 
use those pinto beans for. So maybe you cook a two pound bag of pinto beans. That's like 12 cups of water. You let them soak overnight. You rinse them really well first and then rinse them again and then put them on to cook. It doesn't take long. And how many things can you make with pinto beans? Well, you can make a pot of pinto beans and a pan of corn, a skillet of cornbread or some and a, some salad or some greens with it. And you got a meal without any meat. But what else can you do with pinto beans? Somebody, some people like to make refried beans with them. Smash them up with your potato masher, put them in your food processor, put a few more seasons, seasonings in them, and you got a bean dip. Or you got the base for burritos. See, see where we're going here? Bean dip, burritos. Uh, maybe you want to make nachos with them. There's lots of things I have made, y'all. I have made, instead of making potato pancakes, I have taken pinto beans, mashed them up, put an egg in them, and made little patties out of them, little, little tiny patties out of them, and, and fried them in a skillet. Fried them in a skillet. Browned them up, and they're like pinto bean pancakes. And you can layer them in a seven-layer salad, a uh, um, Mexican dip. Pinto beans can be the basis for many things. Burrito bowls, Martha said. Smashed bean cakes. Y'all put the ideals in, in, in here. Put the ideals in here. But you just got to put it together. Put some tortillas down in a casserole dish. Put a layer of pinto beans and then a layer of salsa and then a layer of, of taco meat. You got an amazing meal. So folks, menu planning. So those pinto beans, what other things can you cook? We've talked about what you can do with with a roast chicken and the leftovers from a roast chicken, everything from, from a uh, chicken salad. I mean, chicken salads, roast chicken salad sandwiches. You can take that carcass, put it in a pot and boil it and make chicken and dumplings. You can take the, the cut the chicken up for fajitas. There's just a number of things you can use with just a roast chicken. Let's see. Beef roast. A beef roast can go... Oh, don't forget the chicken noodle soup. Uh, uh, my, my dog man, Peter's friend, he made... He had a rotisserie chicken. He put it in the pot and cooked it. And then he turned it into chicken noodle soup. Chicken noodle soup, y'all. Chicken noodle soup. I like to make chicken pot pie. Same thing that goes in chicken noodle soup. Celery, carrots, green beans. Turn it into chicken pot pie. Just pastry dough. Or maybe you want to just put some biscuits down in the bottom of a pan. And turn that into like. Chicken cobbler. Yeah, I know that sounds awful, but it's pretty much what chicken pot pie is. So there's lots of things you can make with chicken. Let's go to beef roast. You cook a cook a small beef roast and you can take the leftover veggies and you can take that beef roast and gravy and you can turn that into a wonderful beef stew. Or you can turn it into... Um, Uh, vegetable soup with beef in it. There, my sweet darling's home. And, you know, tortillas, uh, Pam, cooking with Pam, 
is a lady and she has a she teaches you how to make tortillas. It's just it's like playing with Play-Doh. Barbecue beefs. Yeah, you can take take a beef roast and turn it into barbecue like a brisket. So folks, plan these menus, get them on your calendar and you can mix them around. But if you have a basic weekly plan to your menu planning, this is going to save you some money. This is going to save you some money. And you're going to be, you're going to love saving that money. You're not going to realize you hadn't spent it. Because you're eating out of your pantry. You're eating out of your freezer. We feed the squirrels too. We're an equal opportunity feeding station. So beef, chicken. How many things can you make with ground beef? Yeah, I have a great recipe on how to take a bunch of ground beef, put it in a crock pot with a little water, stir it every 15 minutes, and you've got pre-cooked beef to use in those casseroles, the, the Mexican casseroles, or to make spaghetti, or to do tacos. Ready. You put two cups of it in a Ziploc bag, flatten it out, and it's a great way to pre-cook your meat. For chili, hamburgers, you name it. Rebecca makes a great hamburger soup. I've seen cheeseburger soup. And at the end of the little video about doing the ground beef in the crock pot, I teach you how to make my homemade hamburger helper, a can of golden mushroom soup, a tub of sour cream or cream cheese, whatever you've got on hand. And the, the package of meat, onion, bam, you've got dinner with the wide noodles. Stir it all together, put some Parmesan cheese on it. You're good to go. The one thing I learned yesterday after watching this recipe of making this casserole, when you cook your ziti or your, your pasta for your casserole, cook it three, two to three minutes less than you normally would so, so that it can absorb the rest of the moisture while it cooks. Paula, you might have to get over to YouTube. You might have to get over to YouTube. Anyway, folks, my crock pot died and I got another one on eBay. I bet you can go to a thrift store anywhere and pick up a crock pot. And they're pretty cheap on Amazon, too. So, folks. I don't know what's going on here. Plan your meals. Get the food in the house. Right now, I've been planning my Easter dinner. I'm going to make dressing. I'm going to make some chicken. And I'm going to roast some chicken pieces. And I'm going to have dressing and green beans and uh, mashed potatoes. Doesn't get any better than that. Doesn't get any better than that. So plan your meals. Get the food in the house. Have a stocked pantry so you can cook anything you want. 
but I like to get started early. <laughs> Mama Colton's making snow angels in the morning. Anyway, folks, y'all, we got some great deals going on. We got some great deals. You gotta, you gotta be prepared, y'all. Everybody's telling us to be prepared, to be ready for any. I mean, there's tornadoes down in in um, Mississippi last night. They're probably headed our way but they don't usually get over the mountains. Y'all take care of yourself. Get this stocked pantry. You're good to go. Having a stocked pantry saves you money. We got all of our mops are on sale, whether you want a big one or the regular one that's on closeout prices. Our calendars are half prices. Now's your time to get a calendar to do just menu planning on if you want to. <clears throat> so keep the people in Baltimore in your prayers. We just got to be ready, y'all. My little prophets have been talking about watching the water for a long time. I'm glad you're liking the control journal, Miranda. Thanks for getting one. Kathy says her puppy's on the way to recovery. I don't know what happened to the puppy, but God is so good. God gets all the glory in the end, y'all. Give him the glory now. Praise him. Praise him. Sing of his wonderful greatness. Just, I've been listening to Luke Powell and his what he does with hymns and the history. And it's just, I just, he just did the battle hymn of the Republic. I'll have to share that. It was wonderful. She brought the bought the rubber broom to scrub her sh shower. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. I use one to scrub my bathroom floor. God gets all the glory, y'all. All the glory. And we're about out of gray rags and feather dusters. So if you've been wanting to get a gray rag, we're getting, I don't even know what the inventory is right now, but it was under 50 yesterday. And we've got the, the big bundle pack. The big bundle pack is the best deal in the fly shop. So y'all, be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by planning these meals, it helps you more than it does anybody else. Be kind to others. Make a goal of just making five or six meals that you can have in your pantry at all times. Five or six. And you've always got a meal and have that list. So somebody else knows what, what can be cooked. I started the Fly Lady program. Here is absolute chaos, absolutely chaos. I don't know what you mean by that, Nicole, but we can help get rid of that chaos. That chaos stands for can't have anyone over syndrome. And Dutch Sheets, give him 15, was about calming the chaos today. And it was wonderful. And I shared it on our community page on YouTube. So if you get a chance, go listen to it. We, we can help you. We really can. But you got to let go of your perfectionism. Perfectionism is a tool of the evil one to keep you in chaos. And when you see that perfectionism rearing its ugly head, rebuke it and get up and do exactly what it told you not to do. Anyway.
I love you all. I'll see you at three o'clock this afternoon. Three o'clock this afternoon. Bye.